I suppose that idea really comes from watching my my own behavior and paying attention to what what I think I need to find in my own life. So I started making in my 20s, really, a kind of art that deliberately didn't try to occupy your attention, but tried to offer a space that you could uh, walk around inside, mentally walk around inside. I didn't, it, it was actually, it coincided with me losing interest in writing songs. Um, I, I've actually started writing songs again recently, but that's another story. We'll come to that later. But part of the reason I stopped writing songs was because I didn't want the musical space to be occupied by a personality, namely me or whoever I chose to pretend to be when I was singing. I wanted to make a space that was inviting and seductive and nice to be in, but I didn't want there to be another human being already in there. So I, I sort of started to think of myself as somebody who was constructing landscapes of a certain kind um, and the invitation to the listener is to come in and sit in that landscape explore it let it happen to them um, and then I started thinking about why would why did that interest me what what was I doing there and I realized that nearly everything else that happens in your life, if you live in an advanced technological society, is a kind of invitation to somehow take control of things. In fact, because we are a very successful, in some respects, technical society, we tend to think that every problem will be solved by us learning a technique of control of some kind or, or another, either a new, a new technology, a new machine, a new way of, um, thinking about how we live our lives and so on. Um, a new practice, a new religion, a new diet, all of these things are ways of saying, I can take control here. Um, what is very obvious to me is that there are lots of very important times in one's life when one isn't in control. When one can't take the reins and say, okay, I can make this situation work exactly how I want it to. Now, if you think of human history from the very beginnings, from the savannas onwards, um, a big part of the human repertoire would have been involved with controlling, controlling fire, controlling metals, controlling cooking, for instance. But an equally large part must have been to do with learning what to do when you can't control. We couldn't control the weather there. We couldn't control temperature. We couldn't control the growth of food very well. Um, we were in a position where we had to take the world as we found it. Um, and I think humans developed a whole repertoire of ways of doing that. Um, and I call that repertoire under a big umbrella, I call it surrender. Now, when you think about surrender, you tend to think of becoming passive. We, we tend to think of surrender as a form of defeat. I lost control, I, I surrendered. Um, what I want to say is that surrender is a way of being in the world and it's an active way of being. It's a way of becoming part of things because you cannot not be part of them. It's a double negative. You cannot not be part of them. Um, you, you have to actually say, this thing is too big for me. I can't resist it, so I will go with it. And I will find a way of accommodating myself within it and being part of it. I mean, I know this sounds all very hippie and religious, and in a certain respect it is. It is a way of saying, go with the flow. And I am an old hippie. So I don't, I don't uh, pretend I'm not, but, but I, I'm also an old cybernetician and that's a little bit different. Uh, cybernetics is really the understanding of uh, the attempt to understand systems and how they work. And one of the fundamental laws of cybernetics is um, the, the law of requisite variety. 
which I won't go into in this talk, <laughs> but it's it's certainly not a hippie rule. It's it's quite a it's quite a, a stark and clear piece of science. So I'm sort of trying to think about these things, perhaps in a way that um, artists don't usually think, in that I want them to be articulable. I want them to be. I want to be able to speak about them and to think about them. And I want to be able to put them in some respects into a public language, um, which is what science does, of course. Science must work in a public language. That's the definition of science. Um, so what I would like to do is to, is to nudge our art activities a little bit more in that direction into saying, let's, let's actually think about what we're doing. Um, let's try to think about what art is and what it exists for, what it does for us. Um, it's very striking to me that there's very little conversation about that among artists. 